My name is Stephanie Sinclair, and I'm a photographer with Seven Photo Agency. Um, I also work for National Geographic Magazine and the New York Times Magazine, among other clients. I tend to do mostly human rights issue-oriented work and uh, gender issue work, and basically uh, most of that is overseas. I tend to lean towards shooting with a lot of color, and, and it's often very difficult subject material, so I want the viewer to be enticed to be to want to look at the picture. When I was taking pictures of the pregnant women in India, that was actually a project on surrogacy. And you know, it, the best way to illustrate that story was to show their bellies, but the beauty of their saris at the same time. And you know, so you, there was a balance there between a lot of skin tones and a lot of bright colors. And the camera, the 5D Mark II, does a beautiful job at, at adjusting for both of those skin tones and uh, intense color. I just recently completed a project on child marriage for National Geographic. It ran in the June issue, and that was the culmination of an eight-year project. With the child marriage project and the polygamy project, which are probably my two biggest ones that I've done lately, um, both of those were driven by the content. However, it doesn't hurt that you know the FLDS polygamists in Utah and Texas wear these beautiful pastel colors, <laughs> and. Uh, and, and you know they're they're stunning to look at. So you know it, it's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of almost seducing the viewer into kind of wanting to learn more, not just by the content, but by the way the content is presented. Color is very important. It brings a, an immediacy to the photograph. It makes people feel like they're in the moment with you. They're watching it real time. For me, color doesn't have to be super vibrant colors. It can also be a color palette. And so with the polygamous community in Utah and Texas, the scenery was beautiful. It was in the mountains of Utah is where I spent most of my time. And so, you know, that, that particular situation lent itself to more muted colors. As long as the color in the frame was balanced and consistent throughout the project, it didn't have to be the, the most vibrant colors. It just had to be consistent and, and in that same color palette. My favorite lens, hands down, is the 35-1.4. I use it about 90% of the time. I like it because it has, for me, it's, it captures the way I see things the most in, in the same kind of perspective without any distortion. It's also very good in low light. So um, if I'm in a situation that is you know, late at night at a concert or in you know, the villages in Yemen, <laughs> It can, be, it can be used in either situation in low light and turn out you know, the best possible pictures for that situation. I use the 5D Mark II comfortably up to 6400 ISO. But for me, there's been situations that I would not have been able to photograph had it not been able to go that high. And I don't know if the situation would have been documented at all. If it's pitch black, and it has been at times, and it's turned out to do amazing things and created some of the most important pictures of my career. I shoot everything on RAW, so you know I, I want to have the full gamut of what is the camera is capable of capturing of that moment. And so there's not a lot I do in camera, but the fact that I shoot on RAW allows for you know, if there's a situation where there's a lot of snow <laughs> or if there's and there's just small pieces of color or things that can throw the frame off. Uh, the exposure off, the, um, you know, or just sometimes the quickness of when you have to take pictures. It, it gives you the ability to kind of have that flexibility. And for me, I tend to normally shoot a little bit slightly underexposed to also make sure that I don't lose the highlights. It's kind of like I learned shooting chrome. And for me, I get very similar results with the latest uh, Canon cameras like the 5D Mark II. If I shoot it similar to how I used to shoot Chrome, I get more of the response that I did um, when I was using those techniques in my earlier part of my career. When I shoot my pictures on RAW, I will then come back and put them through the Canon Digital Photo Professional program. I like this program because, it, I, for me, it's the most true to the skin tones, which is what's very, very important to me, to have the skin tones correct. When I use DPP, I tend to try to uh, adjust the exposure to just make sure I get as much of the shadows as I can and as much of the highlights, so the, the, the longest uh, 
tonal range. I will also adjust the different options for white balance and see which kind of works best if, if there's one that's not daylight, if I'm indoors or something like that, that needs some uh, fine tuning. The situations that I take pictures of are all, often very difficult to get access to. Uh, this has been the case for many years. And so for me, it's okay to spend the extra time. It's worth it for me to spend the extra time uh, making sure that the quality is the best it can possibly be, which is why I shoot on RAW and it's why I do the initial conversions from RAW with DPP. I tend to really like to mix you know, the beauty of the situation with the horror. And I, I know that sounds very strange, but it's, I mean, that's my experience in covering the world. Even in conflict, the toughest things you see um, are, you know, will be next to the, some of the most beautiful, most altruistic giving things you've ever seen. So it's always these conflicting emotions that I have in the field and with my subject material, and thus it kind of comes out in this way with my uh, photographs.